first of all, uh, thank you for coming. This, this topic is something that uh, I'm interested in and is dear to me. And I would assume that um, it's probably dear to you as well. That's the topic of spirituality. And uh, when you talk about spirituality, uh, people have different views of what that means. Some are more traditional, think of maybe religion. Some of you maybe don't understand what spirituality might be. Or some of you are very involved in spirituality. But one of the things that we have in common is that we are alive. And we live in this world. And we deal with life every single day. So how does one define life? How does one understand life? Well, we go to masters. We read about people in history. We try to find answers to how to deal with the world we're living in. But the truth of the matter is, we deal with life here in our own mind, in our own heart. And so what we perceive life to be is what life is to us. So right now, we have a physical body. And so all of us are physically here. And we present ourselves as we are we're dressed, how we, how we look, how we speak. But also, we have an internal life. We have an interior life that's not known to everybody. Right now, what are you thinking about? No one can tell. My wife is thinking about, I should have got a haircut before I came here. <laughs> but in reality, all of us are, are, have an interior world. And that interior world is extremely valuable and precious because in reality, that's who we are. And so we are able to bring things into that world of our mind and create a philosophy of what we think is right and what we think is true. And so we, we as people that have integrity, will try to live that life. We'll follow our conscience. We'll follow what we perceive to be correct. And if we do that, we think, you know, that's not bad. We're living the life as we should. The problem is, is that other people have philosophies too. And so when their lifestyle doesn't agree with your philosophy, and there's something different about that. Like where I grew up, you know, people say thank you. And sometimes you meet people that never say thank you. And you go, why isn't that person saying thank you? That seems rude. That seems uh, inappropriate. But maybe that person never learned that. It is shy, whatever. So we deal with this world inside of us perceiving out, and we're facing situations all the time. And life really is uh, a lot of problems, you know. There's always something coming up. So our little mind is trying to understand how to solve these problems. Some of them are major problems. Some of them are minor problems. And we think in our mind, you know, if I could just get rid of this element of my life, of these problems, then I'm going to probably be really happy if I had like, just get a way to solve all my bills. I can just get a lump of sum of money and wipe out my entire bills for the rest of my life. Oh, I'm going to be happy. Or if I could just find that one person to share my life with, that one woman who understands me and is excited about me, or that one man that will take care of me, or if I could just have the perfect career, I mean, the perfect job that I go to that I really enjoy. But in reality, there are people that are so wealthy that I could just, at the stop of a finger, have whatever they want, and they're not really happy. Others are, you think of these people, these movie stars that are so handsome and have all these gifts, and they actually kill themselves. So life is, it's kind of complicated, kind of complicated. But the truth of the matter is, we need to know in our mind what really will make us happy, and what really is going to be the purpose of what our life is all about. So let me ask you this question. Is your life predestined? It is somehow something arranged for you? <clears throat> you were born, and then things are unfolding the way they should be. 
And some sense there's kind of a little bit of truth to that. Because when you were born, you didn't have any control over your mother and your father. You didn't pick them. If your father was tall, your mother was attractive, your father was intelligent, your mother had musical talents, and you would inherit that. So you had no control over that. That's something that was given to us. And if you were born in the north, you would uh, know what a quahog is. <laughs> if you were born in the south, you would know what a hush puppy is. I mean, it's just where we were raised, where we were born, we have really no control over that. Up to the age of maybe 15, 16, we're our, our product of our region, of our area where we live. So we are kind of a, there is an element of predestined possibilities that are going to unfold. But also, there is something else that we have in our life. And that is we have a certain responsibility. We have a portion of responsibility. We have the ability to be free. I remember when I was 16 years old and I was at the edge of my driveway thinking, boy, I just want to go. I just want to go out there. And there was a one guy in town that would go to Puerto Rico and Europe. And I go, boy, I want to do what he does, but I'm kind of afraid, you know? But I had that dream and that desire. So I found both in my heart and my mind, I eventually had a chance to travel. So we have freedom. We participate in what is presented to us. That we have the ability to take our life and hone it in a certain way. Educate ourselves, learn a trade, travel, perceive, meditate. These are, there are certain things that we have control over. And I think that's really what, what makes life exciting is that we have the ability to take what was given to us and find a way to make it ours. And one of the advantages, when we can find a way to make our life ours, and we benefit from that, the greatest thing is that other people benefit too. When you achieve, when we achieve something in our life that is meaningful and full, and we can rationalize, we can feel this is the right thing, experience that. Our husbands, our wives, our friends, our colleagues, we can influence them in a way that makes their life more attractive and more bearable. So we are not just living in an interior world with our own minds, but we are bouncing off of each other all the time. In reality, spirituality is really, it's right here. <laughs> it's dealing with the everyday. It's the ability to accept, understand, enjoy, endure life. So this is something we all have in common. And it's something that is our constant challenge. But at the same time, we have a, we have a gift. Because this is a one-time chance. It's a one-time. It's not like... We're here at the moment now. So of course, there's other views about that. But right now, this is it. And so I, uh, I know that many of you are uh, believers, are seekers, are of a high consciousness. And, uh, and that's something that's really honorable, to be around uh, people like yourselves. I think that's one of the things that makes New Bern is so interesting. I know when we go to parties or places like that, one of the questions that people ask you is, why, how did you find New Bern? And it's always amazing, these little stories, like almost like predestined. You know, one woman was driving across the bridge 40 years ago with her husband and said, see that town over there? That's where I like to live someday. And it ended up here. So life is increments of ideas, increments of pushing, shoving, turning. And actually, if you look back, we can see where great changes took place by just one thought, or one point of view, or one person. So we're not alone in this world. We have our mind, and we have our thoughts. But there's some other power, some other predestined intellect, heart, that's guiding us individually. And uh, 
the key is to discover that, to nourish that, to accept that, and to enjoy that. So anyway, um, the, my talk today was uh, Pathway to Spiritual Growth. Um, what I would like to do now is uh, introduce what a labyrinth is. A labyrinth is a means, a path to help us along in this life we live. Um, I found uh, the labyrinth to be very beneficial to me. It gives me a chance to come into my little world and walk and think and, and analyze what is interesting to me and how I want to make changes in my life. So it just gives me a moment of quiet. And so I thought the best way to, just to describe what a labyrinth is is to take advantage of other people's <laughs> ability. And so Edgar Cayce uh, was a spiritualist from the 1800s. He was born in Kentucky, and he was a very devout Christian, very strong Christian. And he had a remarkable talent. He could predict the future. He was a medium, and he would go to sleep, and he would predict these incredible things. And a lot of, a lot of these ideas, these, these, uh, pr these predictions came about. And uh, of course, he attracted all kinds of people, and the, some of the people that were interested in his talent to use his talent for their own fortunes would try to sway him to predict ways to make money. And whenever he would do that, he would get ill. He would get really sick. So he had, a, he had integrity, he had a heart, and he decided to, to, to devote his talent to um, helping others and to using his talent for that which was pure and good. And so uh, Edward Casey um, is one of the um, uh, great men of our time in America. And so there's an Edward Casey uh, research or community up in um, Virginia Beach and so I found this wonderful uh, video that describes about their labyrinth. And so um, I'd like to um, have uh, Chris uh, introduce that. But afterwards, uh, I'm going to um, have uh, Karen, my friend Karen, uh, who's a good friend of mine, get up and uh, give her experience, her personal experience of walking a labyrinth. And then after Karen's